to this nation. I'm on with a different message today. And I want us to speak about how in life, in society, we have what seems like a lot of options presented to us on how we can live our life. So many things that we could do, so many career choices, so many uh, people in the world that you could date, so many apps, so many social media platforms. And it seems like it's just so many options, like to where we're just overwhelmed. But let's go back to the Bible. The Bible tells us that there's a, a path set out before a man that looks good, but it leads to destruction. Meaning that there are only two paths in this life. You're either going to choose God's path or you're going to choose your own path. And in choosing God's path, you're choosing God's will for your life. In choosing your path, you're choosing what you want to do. And I know that like in movies, it's depicted that on one side you have like the, the, the white angel and then on the other side you have the red devil. And that's how society has made it to be like those are the like we have three choices, like which one are we going to choose? When ultimately it's only two choices. You're either going to serve God or serve yourself. And we know that serving yourself is ultimately sin. And we know that serving yourself is ultimately blasphemous towards the Holy Spirit. Because God tells us, Jesus tells us to deny ourselves. And think of it in this way. It's like, imagine you being a director or a creator of a story. And your character or your... The, the, the character that you gave an actress or an actor to play in the movie, they decide that they want to make the script to fit what they want it to be. And it ultimately ruins your vision because you are the creator. You are the author. And in turn, you will be like, you don't want to work with this person no more because they're impossible to work with. And like they, they don't offer any value. They don't add value. They're actually taking value away or they're. And, and what's worse, that that becomes a chain reaction. Then they start having other actresses or actors want to change up their lines and change up their stories. Imagine imagine this for a second. A per Society would deem that actress or actor as terrible to work with. They don't want to work with them. They want it their way. They're selfish. And they're all these, these things, right? God is the director of life. God is the creator of life. God is the author and the finisher. So if God has wrote out a story, wrote out a plan, because in Jeremiah, he tells us that I have a plan for you before you were formed in your mother's womb. So if God had this plan for us and we decide that we want to take our own path in life, we'll make it seem like it's so many choices when really there are only two, God's will or man's will, God's will or the world's will. It's really, it's only two choices. It's only two choices. How do you think God feels when he, the author, the director, the creator and finisher of life, when he has his actors or actresses or his disciples, his servants, telling to him, oh, no, nah, this is why I'm going to do my life. Yeah, I know you got a plan for me, but now nah, I see this for myself. How is God supposed to respond to that? And it, it, it reminds me of a time where I, for a long time, um, wanted to do so many things in life and I wanted everything my way and I wanted it to work out exactly the way that I saw fit, the way that I saw planned, the way that I saw pleasing and good for myself. And ultimately, I wasn't doing anything but serving myself, serving flesh. I wasn't adding value, but I was taking all the value that was in me away. And to, and to, and to help that, we have to surrender to God's will. Surrender meaning like, Lord, you know, saying the Lord's prayer, telling the Lord how you how you feel. He cares about your feelings. He gave you your emotions, you know, and just like we have a lot of suicides and depression going on and anxiety and where well, anxiety and depression is leading to suicides in, in the world. And ultimately what that is, is people wanting to be the author, finisher and creator of their life. Who are you to tell the universe, tell God, not the the God of the universe who created the universe that you, okay, this is where my story ends. Who are you? Who are you to tell him that? Who has searched the thoughts of God? Who knows his mind? Who, who do he consult with? Who do God need approval from? How do you tell God, okay, I know you had this plan for my life, but this would, that's what you're saying. God don't hear, oh, I want to do this. God hear, I had a plan for you and you had a plan for me and I don't want to follow that plan. This is my own plan. That's what God here. He don't hear all, all the, 
the dreams and aspirations and everything. And the good, the great thing about God is when you seek the kingdom of God first and all his righteousness, all the desires of our heart is added unto us. He, he grants us the desires of our hearts. All He grants good things into our life, especially if it aligns with his will for our life. God wants good things for us, but he also wants soldiers. He don't want weak links. He don't want people on the sidelines of uh, cheerleading. He don't want cheerleaders. He wants somebody that's going to get into the game. He wants somebody that's going to, my pastor said Sunday, he said, pick up the mat. He wants somebody to pick up the mat and walk. He wants somebody to pick up their mat and walk. Pick up your cross and walk. That's what God wants. He don't, he don't, and your cross is, he wants you to be like Jesus. Live like Jesus. Jesus is the example. No, we, we'll never be perfect. Until we until we fall asleep on this earth, we're going to be working on something, no matter what that is. No matter if it's ourselves, our ministries, or, or whatever that God has trusted with us, we're going to be always working on something. So we'll never be perfect. Perfection is not a destination. Perfection is not where you arrive. Progressing is what this life is. This life is a rehearsal. God is the creator, the director. We are in rehearsal right now until he says... Lights, camera, action. Now it's time for you to show what he had, what you what you've endured on earth. Now it's time to see how much of your endurance paid off. See if you if if we tend to look at the glass half empty, we miss out on all the good things that God has placed in our life. Like like me, I'm gonna use me for example. I, I sometimes feel a little bad I, I get down sometimes i do but then i think about sometimes it, it, it just be you need that nudge to think like i can actually get up and go walk somebody can't without assistance i can i'm actually breathing right now somebody took their last breath i'm actually i actually ah i'm sorry i actually actually can see right now someone is blind i can hear someone is deaf and it's not comparing and contrasting. It's just making you see how grateful that you really are, that we really are. It's a nice breeze. This this walk with Christ, it doesn't, it's not an easy walk. This is probably the hard, this, not probably. Let me take that back. This is the hardest decision, the hardest thing we'll have to do in our life when we decide to follow Christ. Because when you decide to follow Christ, you decide to say, I'm following Christ and everything in the world. I'm going against everything in the world. So when they say me against the world, because it, it's, it's my salvation. My salvation is on the line. My salvation is on the line. But I don't think about my salvation being on the line when I follow Christ because my hope, my faith is placed in Jesus alone, knowing that, God, I, I don't got it together and I would never have it together until that day that you come and decide whether I, I had it together or not. Let's, 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 let's get into the a gratitude mode. Yeah, we may not have this, but I have this. You, yeah, there's always something to be grateful about. We always overlook the things and then the things that are in our lives today, and then when they're gone, we, we think about them and want to reminisce on them. No, no. Be grateful for today. I'm happy for today. I'm happy for today. I woke up today. I went to work today. I'm living. I'm breathing. I'm recording this video. Hoping that I'm encouraging somebody to... to life ain't as hard as we make it. But it's much more serious than we take it. It's not as hard, meaning it's so simple because he gave us the rule book. The rule book is the Bible. It's not, it's not, I'm sorry, let me go back. <laughs> life is not as hard as we make it, but it's not, life, listen, I didn't got distracted looking. This, this is what distractions do. I didn't got distracted. The rule book is life. The rule book is the Holy Bible. The rule book to life is the Holy Bible. Right? So that's simple. And it's not as as hard as we make it. 
but it's more serious than we take it. It's more serious because when we pass, we still got to answer to God, no matter if you believe it or not. No matter if you believe it or not. We still have to. We still have to. Life is not as hard as we make it. It's not. It's so simple. The only thing you have to do is um, read, read, your, read your Bible. Read your Bible. The only book in history that you read it and it reads you. <laughs> How about that? What, what 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 could that be? The only book in history that could tell you what's going on today, though it was written so, 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 very, very in the beginning. <laughs> you know? Uh, and I'm going to end the video here. Just, just look at the glass half full today. Be blessed in the name of Jesus Christ.